committed. And I am um, a license for the CEO region for Let's Connect Working Group. Um, to do this, as you, you could see uh, at the beginning of this learning clinic, uh, we wrote where are we coming from, and we came. We are from all over the world, and we all speak different languages. We are communicating mostly in English, but today our great shares will tell us a little bit more about language diversity in our movement. Why is it so important, and how? Um, what are they doing every day to help us uh, do our activities and to make everything more available? Uh, today we have Srishti uh, Sati and Sadiq Gil from Wikimedia Foundation. Amir Aharoni was supposed to come as well, but unfortunately he was um, he's not able to participate participate today, but he gave uh, a really uh, amazing impact in the preparation of this learning clinic. He shared his knowledge, he shared his expertise, and Sadip and Srishti will do their uh, best to um, share that as well, besides their own experiences and knowledge. Uh, okay, next slide, please. So uh, where are we here today, actually? Uh, welcome to Let's Connect um, Learning Clinic. Uh, Let's Connect is a program that is uh, being like operated as a joint community foundation initiative. As you can see, uh, there are lessons from uh, many regions in the world. I am for the sea region, Lucy is for Western Europe, uh, and other team members for their own regions. Um, this is a safe space for learning. We uh, do organize learning clinics on various topics. Today, as you know, uh, we have learning clinic on language diversity and uh, we will talk about some tools, how we can use them in our everyday activities uh, within Wikimedia, but we have really various topics that uh, we cover really various topics, and I'm sure that every each one of us can find something that is interesting for them. What is really important that we all want to feel really confident and comfortable to share our own experiences, to share our own mistakes. We do all make mistakes, and that is a very important part of learning. So please don't feel uh, maybe shy or afraid to share that as well. Uh, please keep in mind that this is a safe space, so we uh, are all really friendly and do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. Next slide, please. And why are we here today? Uh, we have some learning outcomes. As I mentioned in the beginning of this introduction, uh, Srishti and Sadip will uh, share their knowledge and share their experience and help us to understand better uh, the whole like, development of volunteer engagement strategies for the language inclusion and, and what kind of technical support work is being done by the Wikimedia Foundation. After this learning clinic, we will understand better the tools we can use and who we can maybe reach out to if we need any help or if we want to do something for our own language uh, communities. Uh, we are also here to share and promote these strategies to our community. So what uh, the so the things that we learn today, we can share it with our community uh, community members. Next slide, please. And this is the agenda for today. Uh, we are now finishing the introduction part. Then we'll have a short icebreaker. After that, uh, Srishti and Sadip will set up the stage. They will tell us a little bit more um, about uh, theoretical stuff that they are doing, and they will show us why is it so important to, to uh, be part of this. Uh, then we will have a talk about the role of technology in language diversity at Wikimedia. Then we'll have very interesting demonstration of the tools. And then we'll have a hands-on workshop, which is a very important part of this uh, learning clinic. As you can see, it lasts for 45 minutes, so make sure uh, to grab your water, to grab your tea and coffee before this whole learning clinic. After that, uh, for the end of this learning clinic, we will have a reflection for 50 minutes. 
sell whatever was not uh, like maybe clear enough or you would like to suggest something or to ask or share something, feel free to do that. Uh, after that, we'll have five minutes closure and uh, that's it from my point, Lucy. Thanks so much, Garana. Um, I'm just going to pause my screen for a moment. Um, as Garana said, uh, I am Lucy. I am the Northwest Europe uh, representative for Let's Connect. And I'm here to take you through a short icebreaker today. So today's session is all about language diversity. So I thought that it would be interesting to share a little bit about our own languages. Um, Garana, is the Padlet visible? Oh, no, I've paused. Hang on, let me just restart that. Is yeah, the Padlet visible now? Perfect. Um, so Garana or Chinu is, are going to share the link to this Padlet in the chat. What the question for our icebreaker is today is, what is your favourite word in your primary language? What is your favourite word and what does it mean? So I've put an example up. Um, it's a joke that in Scotland we have lots of words for rain. So I've added a Scots word, dreek, which means kind of grey and wet. Um, other things you could put would be things, another word I like in Scots is um, fankle. A fankle means things are getting a bit messy. Um, so you'd say something like, I'm getting in a fankle about this, I'm getting confused about this. Um, if you want to take a couple of minutes on the Padlet to share a word, and you can either share its meaning by just explaining it in words, or Padlet lets you use things like uploading images, um, or using a GIF or a song from Spotify or a YouTube video. On my screen, I have 1613. In the interest of time, I'm going to keep this open till 1616. Um, so please do join in on the icebreaker and share a word that you enjoy from your own language. So we've got a couple of minutes to do that now. Oh, Garana has shared Krasno, which means beautiful. Oh, I like that. Krasno. And your pronunciation of the word is good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Spanish. Poderosa is powerful. Oh, I like that. Poderosa. Someone once shared a meme with me that was, I think it was... I think it was Russian words for cat and there's like all these different words for cat like um a little cat a big cat an angry cat like they all have their own little word I should have looked that out that was actually really funny if anyone is happier sharing in the chat please do I can see people coming into the padlet which is nice Norwegian bag. Oh, is that a little kitty? <laughs> oh, it's a polar bear. Chardikala, Chardi state of eternal resilience and joy. Oh, that's lovely. Salam is peace. We also welcome you to come off mic and say it in your mother tongue or the language. Absolutely. Of this sounds interesting to know. Can you pronounce it? Yes, this is called Jejema, which is basically Jejima. Dadi in Hindi and uh, Grandma in English. Oh, wonderful. Someone has shared Petrichor, the smell after it rains on dry soil. I love that. 
John, what does a bag mean? Oh, Kambai has also shared tiap equals cat in English. A bag means bag. Ah! And the, re and the reason is my favorite. It's because um, well, the Norwegian word bag is a loan word from English. Uh, ah, but the English okay. word bag is a loan word from Old Norse. So we oh. used to have the word bag and then we lost it and then we got it back. So the etymology is very interesting to me. <laughs> That is so interesting, John. Thank you for explaining that. At Kambai, if you were able to share the word for cat, what that sounds like, I think Cassie would love to hear it, and I'm sure we all would. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, evening. In Siap language, yeah, the word for cat is okui. Okui. That's the word for cat. Yes, okui. That's oh, like the schwa sound uh, in but yeah, and then the K is labialized. Uh, so, qui. Uh, qui. Oh, qui. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I've had a look at the clock and we're slightly over time here, but this was so enjoyable. If people think of more words, please do add them to the Padlet. It's open throughout the session. Shout out to Katelum, who's just shared Ogburuk, which is fountain in Obolo language. Ah, oh, this is brilliant. Um, I want everyone to like label everything in their room with their language now. Um, okay, I'm gonna pause my screen share for just one moment so I can get back to our slides. And then I will be handing over to Srishti and Satdeep for the rest of the session. Okay. Oh. Uh -huh. I think one of my favorite things about working in Wiki is people think that we're all really, really good at like all really in-depth tech things. And I still can't do a slide share. Like I still find this incredibly challenging. So um Thank you for bearing with me. So we've gone through our icebreaker. Um, oh, and we seem to have gone right to the end of the slides I have here. Please bear with me. I'm just going to pause. There seems to have been an issue there. Uh, why has that happened? You're on uh, a different, uh, different slide deck. Yeah, I'm on the short one. That's why. Yes. Uh, Satdeep, you should do my job, honestly. You'd be. <laughs> You'd be much better at it than me. Um, let's get this tool infrastructure deck up. Sorry, everyone. We had two with the same uh, name, which I think hasn't uh, helped matters. Um, could someone from backstage just ping the link into the chat for me? I'll continue to try and find it here as well. Oh, Chin, I see you hovering in the Google document. Got it. We're on. Lucy, if you want to Perfect. stop sharing. No, I've just found it, Cassie. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Right, we're resuming. Um, I'm going to share a slightly different screen with you all. I've just lost my... There we go. Share. Perfect. We are back. I will never stop sharing this screen ever. This is the only screen I will ever share. All right. Here we go. Srishti and Satdeep, just yell at me when you want things changed, and I will do so. I'm going to hand over to you now, Srishti. Thank you, Lucy. Can you go back one slide? OK, yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we are very happy to be here. Um, we will be. Um, uh, doing a small talk and workshop on the topic of uh, technology for language diversity in Wikimedia today. And um, before we get started, we want to quickly introduce ourselves to you. I'm Srishti. I work as a developer advocate in the language and product localization team here at, at the Wikimedia Foundation. And a little bit about this team. So uh, this team is focused on developing tools to support multilingualism in the Wikimedia movement. And a lot of the tools and projects and initiatives that we will be sharing with you today in this session, uh, some of them, they are developed and maintained by uh, this team, but we will also be talking about a lot of uh, the projects that are uh, developed by or led by community contributors. 
So uh, yeah, before we get started, Sadeep, do you also quickly want to introduce yourself and a little bit about your team? Sure, thank you, Srishti. Hey everyone, I'm Sadeep Gill. I'm based in India and I uh, work in the culture and heritage team uh, at the Digital Foundation. And yeah, uh, as you can hear, learn from the words, culture and heritage, uh, the team is very much focused on um, galleries, lab libraries, archives, museums, previously called the GLAM team. Um, and yeah, like I'm, I in my role have also supported um, some work around uh, Wikisource, uh, the archives part of things, and we'll be touching upon that a little bit as well. Back to you, Tristan. Thanks. Thanks, Sadeep. Uh, so yeah, here is a quick overview of the agenda that we will be uh, touching upon. So we will start by sharing a little bit about language diversity and representation in Wikimedia projects. Then we'll be talking about the role of tech and language diversity, sharing with you a little bit about some of the popular incubation and growth technologies that we know of. And then uh, towards the end, we will uh, be doing some very exciting stuff here. Uh, there will be a hands-on workshop and as part of which uh, we will first give you a quick demo of uh, the two tools. One is translate extension and another, another is section translation. And after uh, the demo, you will get a chance to uh, be a part of a small exercise in groups. So you will be actually making small contributions today by using these tools to your uh, projects or uh, to anything uh, that you are excited about contributing to. So with that said, uh, next slide, Lucy. So uh, first, uh, let's try to understand why language diversity matters. And considering, you know, um, folks who are part of this session, you all are very enthusiastic and passionate about this topic. And um, I can imagine you all will have very interesting opinions to share on this. And we would love to hear your thoughts uh, throughout this clinic via chat. Uh, so why language uh, diversity matters? As um, we all are aware that languages are vanishing at an alarming rate. As per uh, this statistics from United Nations that uh, they shared in 2019, an indigenous language, it dies every two weeks. And more so, uh, many underrepresented and minority languages, they're also struggling to grow. And the reason why this is happening is, uh, next slide, because uh, there is lack of uh, access to education in some of these indigenous minority and underrepresented languages. Now, uh, there is again, this very alarming statistic, uh, statistics from UNESCO. So as per UNESCO's global education monitoring report that they released in uh, 2060, although, although this was uh, a while ago, but I think uh, this holds true even today, uh, UNESCO reports that 40% people around the world, they don't have access to education in a language that they can speak or understand. And uh, this gap, it really makes it harder to preserve and develop many languages as we can imagine. Next slide. And uh, we all know how important language diversity is for sharing knowledge for really understanding the world and connecting with people from different cultures. And it's really the key uh, to making our global community richer. So uh, next we want to touch upon, uh, next slide please. So next we will be talking about what language diversity and representation currently looks like in our projects. And uh, Satip, uh, could you take us through the next part? Yeah. Thank you so much, Christy. Yeah, like how and um, in the in the world that we are right now, how is Wikimedia supporting uh, language diversity? How is it supporting language inclusion? We will be talking a little bit about that. Um, next slide, please. So currently, there are um, three hundred and thirty-three um, languages with 
hosted content project. And what hosted means is that they have, um, you know, out of these eight content projects, they have at least one. Most of them have a Wikipedia edition. And then as you can see, there's like so many dictionaries or Wikibooks, Wikisource, also part of the mix. Um, um, yeah, next slide, please. Um, yep, yeah, so like there are, as I, as I shared, like there are so many dictionaries and Wikibooks and Wikisource uh, uh, in this as well. So we, uh, like Wikimedia in this way becomes one of the most linguistically diverse projects. Um, so half of the languages, they have at least originally one fifth of them have a wiki, have wiki books or wiki source, as you can see. And these statistics are from 1st August, 2024. Uh, things might have changed uh, since then. Um, in the next slide, we'll also look at, um, the writing systems uh, or the scripts. So uh, based on an analysis that was done recently by the research team, we know that we have 36 different scripts. Um, but you can also see that the most common is Latin, which is the biggest in this um, infographic. But there, and then there is Kyrillic, Arabic, or Arabic based scripts and Devnari based scripts. And as you might know already, some of these are left to right and others are right to left. On the next slide, um, let's have a look at this graph. And this is a really interesting graph. It shows that um, based on the number of people that live in a certain uh, region, in comparison to that, how many articles uh, are there on Wikipedia for every million people in different languages, what does it look like? And you'll see that uh, that it's there's a lot of content uh, comparative to the size for Europe or North America, while very little for South Asia or China, uh, Central Africa. Uh, but some interesting things there uh, is also that um, you know, empty areas uh, like the Sahara or the Central Australia or uh, the Antarctic coastline, they're also pretty uh, well represented and have a high number of articles. And the good news is that in the last um, few years, uh, Wikimedians have been adding more content from the global south um, to Wikipedia articles. Um, and finally, uh, in the next slide, I'll uh, just bring your attention to um, how Wikipedia has supported the Nari Sami language, which was in the, it only has a few hundred speakers spoken in Finland at the brink of extinction to say, but um, thanks to the effort of the community members, um, the small community, it now has a Wikipedia, Trident Wikipedia, and it's making a comeback. And they have created um, more than 5,000 articles and helping to keep their language alive and thriving. They're also uh, using this uh, as a learning resource in schools. Um, so children are uh, now able to access it and, uh, and learn from it. So this is just an, an example of in the vastness uh, of the world, how Wikipedia is also helping some of the smallest. Uh, languages. Um, yeah, with that, I, I think we'll uh, just, if someone wants to share anything in the next slide, um, just giving a few minutes, if you have any ideas or thoughts uh, about what we shared already, or if you, if you would like to share anything um, <clears throat> from your context, that's uh, how Wikimedia projects have been helping your language. Feel free to write in the chat or unmute yourself and speak it out. Did you mind saying the question one more time? 
yeah, the question is if you have um, any any thoughts uh, or if you would like to share um, how Wikimedia projects have been supporting your languages uh, and how what kind of an impact it had on your languages or how your languages are using Wikimedia projects. If you'd like to share anything, any, any interesting factor on that, please feel free to unmute or write in the chat. Do we see that's a hand up not... from Gorana? Yeah, that's that's me. Uh, yeah, first I would like to thank you for for bringing this topic up. I'm like my native language is Serbian. We do write in like uh, Cyrillic. That's our uh, like we use Latin as well, but we use like both letters. Uh, but it's very hard because we have, for example, amazing uh, editors in Serbian Serbian Wikipedia or maybe some uh, collaborators, but they do not speak English very well. So it's hard for them to represent their uh, activities and the things they do uh, because they do not speak English. For example, one of the best editors in Serbian Wikipedia, Nikolina, she has won so many global awards, but she's struggling because she doesn't speak English and she are, she's not sure how to get involved. So that can be really a trouble. Well, thank you for sharing that reflection. Um, Ambai, would you like to unmute yourself? Maybe Ambai Timothy, feel free to unmute yourself and you share with us. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello, hello. Everyone. Yeah, so I just want to share a little bit on how Wikipedia has helped my own language. Like, uh, my language is a kind of a minoritized language here in central Nigeria. And um, we, since uh, we started working on the Wikipedia project in 2020, late 2020, well, seeing uh, developments of uh, modern words in our own language, even though we try to work with the uh, language uh, committee to develop these words, but um, it's kind of slow for us going to the organized uh, or established language committee. So we have to use uh, tentative words for modern terminologies, like uh, the words for menu, the words for interface, uh, the words for email, words are not existing. Yeah, the name of my language is TYAP. Um, TYAP is ISO code HCG. Yeah, so um, so Wikimedia, Wikimedia projects like uh, Wikimedia Wiktionary and Wikidata, they actually serve to us as like free websites that we can put in data of our own language because if we are to develop our own websites, then we need to manage them and then to cost us some, some money to do that. But in this very case, Wikipedia, our Wikimedia has provided us with the platform. I think we lost them, uh, but we did get the gist that Wikipedia became a platform for them to revitalize their language. Um, yeah, I'll pass it back to you, Shristi. Next slide, please. Um, how technology supports language diversity at Wikimedia. Oh, we have actually Paula from Colombia who just put something in the chat. Paula, um, okay. I can read your, your message or feel free to come off uh, mic to let us know. If not, no pressure. Um, I could also read it. Um, okay, okay. Thank you, Paula. So Paula said, in Colombia, the exercise that Wikimedistas have developed in Wayuanqui, Wayuanqui, has become a process not only of revitalization, but also of learning and dissemination of the language. However, 
They have faced a challenge because this language is mainly spoken and regarding writing, there are many differences between the different communities that speak it. Thank you, Paula. And I'm so happy to see that we have Wikimedistas in the space. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing these reflections. Uh, over to you, Sristi, for the next part. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for sharing. And I think uh, if I correctly remember, maybe we heard uh, from some folks from the Wayunaki community at Wikimania this year. Um, yeah, it was really uh, good to learn about what the community is up to. Okay, uh, so with that said, we can move on. So in the next part of the talk, we would like to focus a bit on what role technology plays uh, in language diversity. And to start with, we want to highlight a few popular tools. And as I mentioned in the beginning, that even though there might be so many tools that exist, but um, for this talk, we will be talking about popular tools, the most used tools, and um, some of them, they are developed by language and product localization team, but others, uh, they are uh, developed and led by community contributors. And I believe like the first five in this list, they are the ones that are um, uh, developed and maintained by my team. So let's uh, begin by talking about translatable pages. So on many Wikimedia projects, uh, like MediaWiki.org, MetaWiki, you may have observed that articles, they can be made available to readers in multiple languages. You may have come across pages where on the top of the page, uh, there is a link that says translate this page. And what that means is that that particular page can be translated into multiple languages. And these are the pages that we call uh, them as translatable pages. So this is essentially a feature which is provided by uh, the translation extension, which I will be talking about next. And the way this uh, works is that editors, they can split content into smaller chunks using translate tags. And then this makes it really easier to edit and update translations in this way. So what you are seeing on this slide is an example of uh, one such page. Uh, this is uh, a page uh, titled localization and uh, the translation of the content on this page is available in many languages, French, Hindi, and so on. And they can be viewed as sub pages of uh, the original page. So uh, the next I will be talking about is the MediaWiki Translate extension. So this is a tool which is used on sites that run on MediaWiki.org to localize software interface messages. And this extension, it is uh, used on TranslateWiki.net primarily. And this is the site which covers many Wikimedia projects, including MediaWiki extensions, mobile apps, and so on. And uh, as we mentioned in the beginning, uh, we will be uh, showing you how this site can be used as part of the workshop later today. One thing very interesting about uh, this site is uh, th the software is that it is uh, also used by external open source projects like KDE. But uh, one thing to make sure here is that uh, this extension should not be uh, confused with translation, uh, with content translation, because uh, that is a different uh, tool. So next up uh, is content translation. So content translation, uh, this is a tool that can be used to create Wikipedia articles by translating them from one language to another. So uh, Let's understand how the idea for this was born. So from what I understand, what happened was that until 2012, uh, we had a uh, Translate Wiki, which is this uh, service that can be used to translate the software interface messages. And then um, uh, at Wikimania, which took place in 2012, people started asking if something like this can be made available even for articles. 
And that was when the idea for a uh, content translation was born. So a little bit more about content translation on the next slide. So uh, this is not a machine translation tool. Although uh, for content translation, there is a translation, a machine translation service, which is uh, made available for some languages to provide more assistance. But uh, even with that, the, the final translation which you publish needs to be uh, completely checked fa for fact checking, references, styles, et cetera, before you actually um, hit the publish button. So all this to say that even though uh, there are machine translation uh, services available for uh, this tool for some languages, but uh, the translation, ultimate translation needs to be done by humor, humans before submitting it. So one thing uh, which is very interesting and one of my favorite about this tool is that it has been really impactful uh, tool so far. So if you go to the next slide, you will see that uh, even though uh, this tool was uh, deployed like really long time ago, this was in 2015, uh, but since then we have seen 2 million articles that have been created by using this tool. And even though uh, the delet deletion rate, it can be different in different languages, but uh, what it has been found is that it is usually lower uh, than for articles which are created without translation. So yeah, I think this is a really a cool tool and I'm sure some folks uh, here in the room uh, are already familiar with it. And if you haven't got a chance yet to explore it, I highly recommend uh, checking it out. So with that, we can go to the next slide where I will be talking about the section translation uh, tool. And I think Sadeep will uh, be giving us a demo of this later as well. So a section translation is uh, essentially an extension of content translation uh, tool. And it, it provides us, um, it gives us an experimental support for translating on mobile devices. So just like with content translation, you can uh, translate complete articles. With section translation, you can actually translate and work uh, section by section and translate uh, sentences. And that really makes it easier to edit translation when you're working on your mobile device. So uh, on the next slide, I will be talking a bit about uh, this fairly new machine translation service. So I think it has been active since last year. So if you're not familiar with this, so this is a machine translation service which um, relies on already existing language models that have been developed by other external organizations or are part of external projects. And what Mint does is that Mint uh, combines uh, these external language models to make a unique service for Wikimedia. And this is integrated with our content and section translation tools, also uh, the translate extension. So uh, there is also uh, this uh, service called uh, Mint for Wiki Readers, which is even newer uh, than Mint. And this incorporates the Mint service, which allows you to read an article in your language by translating it from another language. So this is uh, also uh, something which is in progress and uh, uh, is going on as part of an experiment. And so far it has been deployed in 23 Wikipedias. So on the next slide, I want to highlight a bit about uh, the impact that we have seen with Mint. So uh, the Mint for uh, translators, it has increased coverage for around 135 languages that um, lacked machine translation support previously. And with the Mint for Wiki Readers uh, initiative, we have seen that it caused a 300% spike in Mint usage after deployment. And uh, lastly, 
uh, we have also seen an increase in monthly translation for about 55 wikis since uh, Mint uh, was launched. So I think that's uh, really, really impressive. So with that, uh, I would like to pass it back to Sadeep to uh, talk us about the next, uh, to take us through the next set of tools. Thank you, <clears throat> Tracy, uh, once again. I'd like to note that we're running a little late, so I'll just quickly go through the next set of slides so that we can go into the demonstrations and also get some time for um, hands-on working uh, with, uh, with a couple of these tools. So yeah, next tool is language uh, language converter. Um, it's um, about mainly I think it's it's a it's a script converter where you see on one side on the screen there is Cyrillic um, or Cyrillic script um, for um, for my clients, Serbian Wikipedia, and on the right side same in Latin because there are many languages which are um, written in multiple scripts, so it gives an option of seamlessly. Um, converts it from one script to the other, uh, especially when there is a, a direct letter to letter match. So next uh, tool, please. Um, the Wikimedia Incubator. I'm guessing many of you are familiar with it already. So it was started in 2006, and it is for starting new language versions, be it of Wikipedia, Wikibooks, Wikinews, Wiktionary, Wikiphoto, Wikiverag. So this is where uh, you would get it started. Uh, this is where new languages would incubate, to say. Uh, and once there is enough community, there is enough uh, so, um, interface translation on Translate Wiki, um, and there is some regular uh, activity around it, then it's ready to be a separate standalone project. Uh, next up, um, we'll talk about uh, yeah, we'll show you how it looks, how um, you know, a language, is a Solity language, and how does it look like on the incubator while it's still in um, in the phase where it's being uh, created. Uh, so you can, uh, there are some some important links there that people can um, uh, can check out and see where it stands. Maybe people can check what activity or what state it, uh, it is at what localization requirement it meets already or not. So there are links around that. And um, so it's really easy in that sort to say, to check if it meets the requirements or not. Uh, next up, uh, uh, we have a couple other tools related to this. Oh okay, yeah, impact of the incubator um, is that more than 1000 languages have at least one test with you and six, more than 600 have a very substantial uh, test wikis and 217 wikis have graduated from the incubator uh, in the last um, many years, since 2006. Um, next up, we have um, multilingual wiki source. So we talked about incubator. Incubator is for those six different projects, but then there is wiki, multilingual and beta wikiversity. So if you're working with uh, print uh, with text, uh, printed text, uh, uh, manuscripts, then you have to go to Wikisource, and this is where if it's a new language, you go to multilingual Wikisource. Uh, so it's it is the the Wikisource uh, um, equivalent of the um, incubator. Uh, so yeah, uh, there are seventy seven languages, uh, and it's my favorite project. Next up, uh, we have the Beta Wikiversity. Um, and this is again for Wikiversity, which is supposed to bring um, learning material together uh, around different topics. And so this Beta Wikiversity is also an incubator uh, project for Wikiversities only specifically. So these two, uh, these two types like Wikisource or Wikiversity, they have specific needs um, which necessitates a separate uh, incubator incubation space for them. Like Wikisource, for instance, um, it is to bring scanned files to text, uh, to digital text, and that's an, an, an additional functionality that's available on multilingual Wikisource, not on incubator. So that's why it needed a separate um, space for that. And finally, um, I'll 
uh, just mention a tool which is not um, a Wikimedia tool. Transcribus is um, it's an outside Wikimedia technology. It's a, built by a cooperative, but we have um, integrated it into Wikisource. Uh, so this is for handwritten text recognition. We have other other OCR engines as well. Uh, like Google OCR, we, we've got that from Google and Tesseract and open source OCR. We have those two engines as well, but this is the latest tool that we integrated into Wikisource. Um, this was uh, promoted during Wikisource course manuscripts campaign. Um, and we have first versions of Balinese and Javanese languages. Um, they're handwritten text recognition models or OCR models. Um, people can use it on Wikisource and uh, they are available even outside of Wikisource for other trans uh, this users. Uh, next up, uh, there, I just want to note to turn down in the next slide that this is not the all exhaustive list. There are so many other things happening, uh, so many other initiatives, other technology um, um, spaces around language diversity, like the hub our um, affiliates like Wikitongues, conference like the one happening right now, um, not conference, and yeah, um, many other things. Um, next up, um, uh, we'll just mention, look at some of the challenges uh, that even though we, you know, Wikimedia supports so much language diversity, uh, still uh, on the internet, um, the top 10 languages dominate uh, about 77% uh, of the digital spaces. Uh, many languages are not recognized by search engines and um, languages with more content, extensive uh, content in Wikipedia are prioritized um, in search engines as well. Um, so yeah, and, and then the, there are challenges with the incubator, incubator, incubator as well, that there, you know, for languages which have limited speakers or contributor would take them uh, so, uh, a, long, a much longer time to, to come out of the incubator and have their own uh, Wikipedia or dictionary. Um, so yeah, there are many, many challenges uh, on the internet on Wikimedia projects as well. Um, yep, but that I'll... Again, uh, pause a little. Um, I think since we are over time, let's let's have the, the final time for reflections um, at the end, and we can jump into the the demonstrations. Um, so, Shristi, uh, would you like to go ahead and show us uh, how transcript extension works like? Yeah, I was wondering maybe we can like take uh, one or two reflections. Uh, as we like talked for a really long okay. time, folks, folks may have some thoughts okay. to share. Okay. Would yeah. anyone like to share? Oh yeah, Cassie, sorry you said. Oh, no, sorry, we're both thinking the same thing. All it's all good. I was just gonna say you can come off mic or you can put your thoughts in the chat. Either one. Yeah, if anyone would like to share their experience using any of these tools or any reflections that you um, want to share on the things that we shared so far, we can take one or two reflections and then move on. Well, what's your favorite tool? I can see that Jan wrote that 22 languages graduated from the incubator last year, a new record, and most likely 20 plus will graduate this year too. Uh, John, uh, do you want to add something maybe about this? Or... Mm, not, not really. Um... I, I, did, I did write languages, but I did mean projects because some of the projects uh... You know, it wasn't the first project in that language. Like we launched some dictionaries and some wiki quotes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're probably going to break this record this year because we're already at 19 approved projects and we still have three more months to go. So um, yeah, hopefully we can break it next year as well and just keep on accelerating. 
I see Chinu has her hand up. Chinu? Yes, I just wanted to share that I have used this base translation extension and this is really helpful, uh, especially uh, when we translate the essential resources. Like I personally do um, translate uh, useful pages related to grant, related to poor industry selections, related to technology, like new tools and uh, products. Um, so the paste translation tool kind of helps me a lot. It saves a lot of time as it breaks down the uh, content into different sections. Also, you don't have to take care of the alignment or the template part. It automatically translates and fits into the content. So that saves a lot of time and effort uh, in case of that. So that has helped me a lot. Thank you, Chinu, for sharing. Yeah, um, yeah, I can imagine how helpful this tool is. And I know that uh, there are some research studies going on as well on how uh, the user experience of um, translating on uh, translating using the translate extension can be improved further. So um, hopefully there will be some improvements coming at uh, some point, not anytime soon, but maybe in the in the years uh, there will be some changes that we can hope to see in that extension. Okay, I think with that, we can uh, move on. I will start sharing my screen. Um, I think for that, someone has to stop sharing their screen. Okay. All right, do you see my screen now? Yes, visible to me. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, I think um, next up we will be uh, talking a bit about the Translate extension uh, tool and Translate Wiki. And then uh, I think Sati will be sharing about the section translation tool. And after that, we will uh, go to the breakouts. So first uh, I'll be starting by sharing a bit about Translate Wiki. So, I'm sure you all are able to see here that I am on the Hindi language wiki. And if you uh, don't, uh, if you cannot understand or read Hindi, then uh, some of the words here, which are, are not in English, um, you'll not be able to read them. But the reason why I'm sharing this um, web page is that all the translations that you are seeing in Hindi, they are powered by uh, translatewiki.net that you all will be interacting with today. So translatewiki.net, it powers a translation of uh, messages that are used across Wikimedia projects, uh, like on MediaWiki, which is the software that uh, powers, uh, uh, you know, many Wikimedia wikis then um, uh, lots of extensions, mobile apps, and so on. So if you have not created an account yet on translatewiki.net, um, we will be encouraging you to do that as a first step to get started uh, later in the workshop. So as you can see here, that I'm lo already logged in to translatewiki.net with my credentials. And um, when you are logged in, you see a page like this, where you can get an idea about the number of projects available, number of translators, a number of messages that are available to translate and active languages. So uh, for the workshop today, we will be focusing on um, the MediaWiki project because that is the software that uh, powers Wikimedia wikis, including language Wikipedias. So we will be taking a look at that. So after you select MediaWiki from uh, this list of projects to translate, you are uh, redirected to a page which uh, gives you a little bit of information about how you can translate different words on uh, this platform. 
So I'm not going to go through this page right now, but what we will do is uh, that we will take a look at what the, the translate, uh, translate extension actually looks like. So this page that you are seeing here, it will uh, give you an option to pick a language which you are most comfortable with. So what I will do here is that I will search for a language and Hindi is, is my uh, first language. So I'm go going to select Hindi from this list. And uh, after I do that, it's going to start loading some messages and you'll be able to see the messages in three different categories. So one is untranslated. And what that means is that this list is going to show you all the messages which have uh, not been translated yet. Then there is a group uh, which is called outdated. And what that means is that uh, these messages, um, they are no longer up to date because the original message has changed in the code. And so this now requires an update. And the translated messages is um, a group of messages that this, which shows uh, the messages that have already been translated. And you can get a sense of like, if you're getting started, you can first maybe scroll through this list to get a sense of how uh, the messages uh, have been translated so far. So now I'm going to go back to this untranslated group and then try to see uh, what messages I would like to start with. So when you will go to the untranslated section, uh, you can see that on the left, there is a message that needs translation. You will see it um, in English. And on the right side, you will see um, a bunch of helpful instructions. So to start with, uh, there is a, a little information which shows uh, what this message is all about. So for example, this one here says, uh, this is a tooltip for the toolbox link used to collapse all collapsible elements on page. And then um, in this section below, you will see that there are some suggestions which are given to you. And for these uh, suggestions, the software makes use of uh, the machine translation. So there are two machine translation options. Um, one is using Google Translate. And then there is another which uses the new Mint uh, service that we just talked about a few minutes ago. And then there is uh, this uh, third one on the list on the top, which gives you an idea that how much percentage uh, um, here is uh, accurate for this translated message. So you can read these messages and try to get a sense which one seems more accurate to you. And then based on that, you can uh, select one of them by clicking on it. So I'm I'm going to, for example, click on this one, which is uh, uh, provided by Google Translate. Another thing to note here is that um, in the left hand side in the input box, you will see a little keyboard button pop up. Although it is very tiny, so I don't know if you're able to see it in my screen share. I can zoom in a little bit to show you. So uh, there is this little keyboard um, uh, button. So if you will click on it, you will be able to see a lot of uh, input methods, which you can select to really make it easier for you to type in your native language. So I want to first, uh, select English to show you how that looks like with English and then uh, show you how you can select another language. So now in order to, to search for other language, what you can do is from uh, the list of other languages, you can click on this these three dots over here 
And when you will do that, you'll be able to search for a language. So uh, for example, um, again, I will search for Hindi here. And when I do that, I will have to click on this button one more time to be able to see what are the available keyboards for my language. So for example, for Hindi, there are many, many different options available. There is Lipyantran, Inscript, Bolnagri, uh, Phonetic, Inscript. So there are these a bunch of keyboards available. So I'm going to select one of uh, these, which I'm most comfortable using. And then when I do that, I should be able to now uh, write in um, write in the script. So as you can see now, um, I will use my English keyboard to type Hindi characters. So this, this is a really cool feature, I think. So after uh, you are done making necessary edits to the translation which was provided by a machine and you are happy with uh, the translation, you can hit submit and that translation will be submitted. I'm not gonna hit publish right now though. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to share a little bit about the input methods. And one more thing that I would like to share here is that in case uh, you find that there is uh, an issue with uh, uh, the the uh, translation message, then uh, you can go to this link over here. So I believe that um, with every message, you will see a similar link which says need more help, uh, help ask for more information. So when you will click on this link, you will be taken to Fabricator. I am not sure how many of you are uh, familiar with uh, Fabricator. If you have any questions about using this tool, we can, uh, I'm sure, answer in the breakout rooms. So Fabricator is the task management system that we use in Fabricator, uh, we use in Wikimedia. So uh, this is the tool that you can use to file an issue, a translation issue that you have uh, come across and it populates uh, some information automatically for you. It generates a title. Uh, it also pastes the message URL that you are referring to while describing the issue. There's also a tag. And then you can describe the issue that you um, uh, have encountered in a few sentences and uh, hit create new task uh, uh, to actually create this issue and uh, someone should be able to uh, reply to it. So I think this was a little bit about the tool. Uh, one more thing that I would like to share with you is uh, this message group statistics over here. So if you will click on the language statistics, I think this is a this is a very interesting feature of the Translate Wiki um, that platform because uh, these uh, statistics they show you uh, that for a particular project, how many of the messages uh, they are untranslated right now, how many of have been completed, how many of them have been reviewed or are outdated. And uh, this also gives you a sense of which project needs more help. And maybe you can uh, make a choice to pick a project uh, to contribute translations accordingly. So this is by projects. Another way to browse these statistics is by language. So if you will go to uh, this page, you will be able to see um, how for each language, uh, how many messages are completed, reviewed, and outdated, same thing. So for example, if I would like to search for how my language is doing, um, I think I, I can uh, search by a language code. So since I was already on um, uh, the Hindi option, I am able to see the language code here, but you can change it from the search bar. And then um, the messages that, that I'm seeing here, uh, they show that how uh, many messages they have been translated in Hindi for each of these uh, projects. Now, what I'm most interested in is MediaWiki because that is like really the software that powers uh, language Wikipedias. And here I can see that 
um, the messages that have been completed so far in this row, it shows as 36%. So, um, which, which clearly means that um, the project really needs help. And uh, in order to take it to 100% completion, uh, we need to translate a lot of uh, messages that are remaining to be translated. So this is a really nice explorer to learn how uh, your language is uh, currently doing when it comes to translations. So I will pause uh, there and see if anybody has maybe a quick question and then um, we can go to the next tool. Would anyone like to ask a quick question? We have one question in the Etherpad. Uh, what are the criteria for getting a language added in Google Translate? What portion of Translate Wiki must be translated? Uh, example, if Google uses the database of Translate Wiki for its Google Translate app, I'm asking on behalf of small language like type. Uh, I will just copy the question in the chat so you can take a look. Okay. Okay, I think uh, since uh, this is a, is a question specific for the TIAP language, um, maybe I can get in touch with the contributor later and see, um, you know, how uh, you are currently doing where you are in your onboarding uh, journey, and then um, share with you some next steps to maybe add translate uh, to get your language added to translate wiki if it has uh, not already been added yeah but i think uh, google translate is not something that wikimedia uh, can yeah but, but if there is no google translate available in your language uh, that's a separate process that wikimedia does not control um i mean one thing that has have helped other languages is you know the more that a wiki uh, the wikis wikimedia projects in your language grow there are more chances for google and they have more data to rely on to enable it in the future so there is no direct link yeah i i think i'm also recalling the example of welsh wikipedia where um they were not available in the Google suite of products earlier because uh, there was uh, no data available for them. But then the community, they started making a lot of contributions to Wikipedia and Wikipedia projects. And as there was sufficient content available after a certain point of time, Google decided to include uh, them in the in Google Translate and similar other products. So I guess the way to get included is by contributing more to Wikimedia projects. That, that's what I learned from the Welsh story, which I can also drop a link in the chat. Happened with Punjabi as well. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing about um, Translate Wiki, Christy, and going into some of the details there. So I'll, I will um, give you a little bit of demo of the section translation tool. Um, I hope many of you know about the content translation already. Content translation is uh, the feature you know, which Christy talked about, which helps you, uh, helps you with an interface with a source language and a target language interface uh, you have, and then you can translate using machine learning if available. But even without machine learning, you can manually uh, translate as well using the same interface. Um, and content translation is for creating new articles uh, from one language to the other. So, um, and similarly, on, uh, section translation is, you can say an upgrade uh, to, the, to the content translation, or it's an expansion as it said, as it says here. Um, on the media wiki page. Um, let me share the link to this in the chat as well. So this page has more details around it. If you are interested, one 
one big uh, feature that it has is it is made for mobiles. It is mobile first, but you can also use it on desktop as long as you're in the mobile URL. And this, another key feature here is that you can um, not only create new articles, you can expand existing articles, but with sections that are missing from them and are available in other languages. So both of these are, I think, quite important new you know, up, updates or upgrading the content translation feature. Uh, if you go to this page, this has a lot of further details and um, what different languages it is available in. And you can also, you know, you can create links to send to someone that they go to a specific article to translate or even a specific section between an article to translate. You can create those links. Uh, these links can be then used in campaigns if you want or uh, contests. Uh, so this is a really powerful, really um important upgradation um so yeah feel free to go and check it out there are some videos there as well some screencasts um but now i'll show you uh how it looks like on punjabi wikipedia my native wikipedia uh so this is the main page of punjabi wikipedia as you can see this is pa.wikipedia.org and if i search for special colon content translation there are other ways to go to this as well um to this page but i'll just use this for now if i go to special colon translation it takes me to a new translation and i can just create a new article because i'm in the the desktop mode but if i go back either i put an m in the url pa.m.wikipedia.org or i can select mobile view from the bottom and when I do it, it opens up same Punjabi Wikipedia, but this time in the mobile view. And then I go to special colon content translation. Then it takes me to this page, which has both new translation, but also expand with new sections. If I go to suggestions, it even gives me this you know, what articles I can expand with new sections. So for instance, the Lotma Shom, an actress, um, let's just have a look how, how this would, how this article looks like. It says this is available. This is just, just says Punjabi in Punjabi language, but this article is available already. Um, and so let's just try and just, let's just have a look at it. So this says, what are the sections in, in Punjabi? There's early life, there's a reference section. There's probably no filmography um, or maybe no career. So I'll just select, okay, let me translate the career section. And it will, it also has an option for me to check the full article in Punjabi. So the full article in Punjabi has, I need to check, um, yes. So the career section is not here. This is just an early life section. So I check it, I say, okay, yes, let's translate this section. And then whether you are on mobile or you are um, on desktop, now you'll get word first, the, the title and then sentence by sentence you, you translate. It gives you some suggestion, trust, suggested translation for me. I will go ahead with this. I don't need to edit this. I'll apply. But for the next sentence, uh, they say, you know, went to Delhi to this college and joined this group. I'll probably edit this a bit. So it takes me to that specific sentence and to edit it. Because they have not picked up the gender correctly. They're saying instead of she, he in Punjabi. So I'll, I'll fix it and I'll make this change and it will take back. And as you see, the heading, the title, and then this um, one sentence and one 
this has been translated. I can click on the next sentence and translate it, uh, or I can edit this translation, or I can just apply it directly. So, but for now, I'm not going through and translating it all for you. I'll just say skip. I'll just skip it, and I'll just say, I think, oh yeah, there's another word. Uh, I can also say done, but okay, I'm done. I'm only adding this one line. And this is done. It says it's 81% of unmodified text, um, but it's, I've checked if it's, it's all right, and I can actually confirm and, and just publish it. And I'm logged in in my um, volunteer account, and I'll just publish it. I'm definitely gonna go back and add more lines to it. Otherwise, adding one line just defeats the purpose. And it has added this one line here. It needs to go into the specific section. So you, you need to go and fix make some fixes later, but it still helps you improve articles with that interface. Um, and yeah, so there are suggestions and I just had, uh, yeah, one more thing is today, uh, we'll, we'll come to this, but there is test Wikipedia, if you have not heard of it. Test Wikipedia is for experimenting um, and to learn um, and to test new features. So this tool for you, because this might be new for most of you, if you've not worked with it, instead of going to your main Wikipedia first, um, it's very much recommended that you first test this tool out on Test Wikipedia. I've shared the link. You select languages, what language, what's your source language and what's your target language. Like here, select, uh, let's say English. And here, I'll say, or actually, or Afrikaans, like whatever language you want to work with. It should give some suggestions if it doesn't. I'm not sure what's the problem. Maybe refresh. Um, let's, yes, refresh worked. Um, so yeah, like this, let's go to test Wikipedia and test it out and, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen here. Our time is up for the demonstration. Let's go into hands-on. Thank you, Sadeep. Thank you, Srishti. Those demonstrations were really amazing, and I think it was useful for all of us to see and to hear. We had some interesting questions that we will uh, went to in the reflection part. Now, here comes the um, hands-on part of this learning clinic, where we will use this knowledge and where we will use this demonstration that our amazing sharers uh, have given us. And we will divide into two breakout rooms, one for each tool. So I will ask Cassie to divide us all. Thank you, Korana. Okay, so Sristi will be in one room and Sadiq will be in another. And then I will divide the space into two. Um, give me one second, everyone. I'm going to pause recording. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming back. This section of the reflection after the workshop um, by our amazing facilitators and sharers. Um, this is a space where we can reflect on what took place as we begin to close out our learning clinic. So I'll pass it back to our sharers and facilitators. Okay, I can speak a little bit about our breakout room. Uh, Sadeep and um, me were talking with our amazing participants about some of the maybe troubles that can be happening uh, with the translation when we do, for example, try to translate some template from uh, when we use uh, tools, when we translate some of the templates, they are just not possible to work on our language Wikipedia, for example, from English to Serbian and Serbian is not working because we do not have that template in Serbian Wikipedia. So we were talking about that kind of troubles as well. 
uh, but working on test uh, Wikipedia um, was shown to be um, without any troubles. So maybe Sadip, if you want to share a little bit more or any of the participants, if you would like to share your thoughts about our breakout room exercise, please feel free to do that. Yeah, I think it would be better if a, if a participant uh, would like to share something like Chelsea or someone else who actually use test Wikipedia and, uh, during this, the period. So sorry, I heard my name, but I didn't get it. I didn't hear the question. Yeah, can you can you share how the experience was for you of, of using Test Wikipedia and section translation on it? Um, yeah, just any reflections around that? Oh yeah, sure. No, it was really nice to have a space where I don't feel um, not pressured, but it's I can make mistakes and it's okay if I make the mistakes because it's not affecting like an actual Wikipedia. It's just on the test, the test one. So that was nice. Um, I haven't dabbled too much in translating yet, um, but it's very important for reporting my work actually um, with my affiliate to translate from English to French. So it's nice to know how I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, overall, I think yeah, uh, it was good to hear from um, the participants that were there. One of them uh, mentioned some issue uh, with using or adding references to, uh, in the in section translation or in content translation tool, um, and that they were use they were manually copy pasting content. But during the period of that space, that they were able to find out what um, they were doing wrong and they were able to fix it and hopefully now they'll use this to more. So that was exciting to hear. I can see Srishti is having troubles with audio. So maybe uh, someone else from the main room wants to um, share their, their uh, feedback from the discussion and workshop. And then we can go to questions. We, we have one question that is not being answered yet. So what is happening in the other room? Why are you keeping secrets from us? <laughs> Srishti had to leave us. There were some audio difficulties, but... Um... If I recall correctly, we had some lovely teamwork. Uh, John helped Jean-Paul get um, something set up on one of the Translate wikis, and we were able to have a bit of discussion about that. And I think there will be further connection with Srishti and a couple of people in that room um, on other kind of translation matters. So we made some really good connections there. Thank you, Lucy. And that is amazing. And that is like the whole point of our, our sessions to connect between each other and to find some solutions and to work further together. Uh, now, if we take a look at the Etherpad, we have one question that Sadiq had answered in our breakout room. And that is about uh, why is the process so complex and dominated by the admins or bureaucrats to get the translation marking up right? Um, Sadip had sent a, a link to the blog where it is very well described. So please, if you're interested in uh, learning more about that, please take a look. Uh, it is a very complex process and it's not very easily explained, to be honest. But thank you, Sadip, for, for sending this and for explaining a little bit better. Do you like to add something or to go to second question? Yeah, no, about the first one, I think the question was a bit unclear. I tried to point in the direction that I know that can help. Um, but if and whoever added that question as a follow up, uh, feel free to reach out to me um, directly later. You can find me on Telegram or email me. I'll just write my email in the chat as well. Yeah. Thank you, the next question. 
so the next question is to get a language out of the incubator, are there a number of words that needs to be translated? Any special criteria? So um, I've written down the, the basic criteria, uh, which is that you need at least three editors and um, who make at least 10 edits for at least three months in a row. Like this is the bare minimum. The language committee does like does seek it to be a bit more than that. Like uh, uh, that's not written down, I guess, but a few hundred um, articles is something that's uh, um, uh, expected. And then they also need to translate the interface uh, as well. Well, the, what we learned today about translate wiki uh so you know so you need to translate the interface into their own language as well that's the basic criteria there's i don't think there is anything about the number of words as such and john is here from the lancom as well john if you would like to add anything to do it. uh thank you covered everything um there is one thing I'd like to mention, which is that uh, right now the Celtic Knot Conference is going on, uh, and you can participate online for free. Uh, and there's still one more day of conference tomorrow. So uh, if you're interested and you have time, I would encourage you to, to join that uh, as well. Yeah. Thank you, Sadiq. Thank you, John, for. Um answering the question. I just, sent, I just sent a link to the conference in the chat, but you can find all the links uh, that we use today in the etherpad. And everything will be shared uh, with you after the session. So you will have access to all the um, resources and all the things that we have used today. Uh, thank you for the questions. If you have more questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us or to our uh, shares they had share their emails in the chat now we will do the closing part so i'm handing the mic back to lucy we're right on the hour thanks garana so i'll be as quick as i can and um, one thing we do like to ask you to do and you don't have to do it within this session but we would like to share the link with you is to give us some feedback on how this session went um, what we could do better and what we could improve one of my colleagues will put that in the chat for you um, it's been delightful having you all here today. Please do stay connected. Please do stay positive and enthusiastic about the huge difference that you're making to Wiki. We hope to see you all in other Let's Connect sessions soon. And both Srishti and Satdeep have shared their email addresses in the chat for you. Um, and the resources will be live in the next week. So that is everything. Let's continue to connect and work together. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, we're going to stop recording 